Hey everyone, today we're going to use what we learned about perfect squares and perfect cubes to solve equations. If you have your lesson worksheet, take that out now. If not, grab a sheet of paper so you can follow along and do the examples with me. And you should also take out your table of perfect squares and perfect cubes, right? This will be very helpful as you're solving the equations today. Okay, here's the problem. We are gonna solve equations that have exponents, right? X squared equals 49, X cubed equals 64, and X cubed equals negative 27. Now, before we start, let's highlight some important things. So just like any other equation that you solve, we're gonna be using the inverse operations to solve our equations today, right? And remember, inverse means the opposite. So the opposite of squaring a number, right, the opposite of putting a number to the second power is finding the square root of that number. And the opposite of cubing a number, right, putting it to the third power is finding the cube root of that number. So we're just gonna be going backwards. All right, I'm gonna start out by looking at my first equation. It's x squared equals 49. And I'm gonna write that e equation again just to give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, the opposite of putting a number to the second power is finding the square root, because I'm asking myself what number to the second power would be 49, or what number times itself would be 49. So I would need to find the square root, and whatever we do on one side, we do on the other side. So I'm left with x equals 7, right, because 7 times 7 is 49. And if we forget that, we can go back to our table, and we can look at our list of perfect squares, and here's 49, and I can see that the square root of 49 is 7. Okay, our next example, we have x cubed equals 64. So I'm going to start out by writing that equation again, right? I always like to give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, the opposite of putting a number to the third power is finding the cube root of it. So we're going to do the cube root on this side. And remember, whatever we do on one side of the equal sign, we do on the other side. Now, be careful with this because this is a cube root right here. And you might be tempted to say that x equals 8, right? But x doesn't equal 8. If we look at our chart here, I do have a 64 on the perfect square side, but we're looking for a perfect cube this time, right? We're looking for a cube root. So the cube root of 64 is 4 because we want to know what number times itself times itself again is going to be 64, and that would be 4. Okay, our last example is x to the third power equals negative 27, right? So that's unusual to have a negative. The opposite of going to the third power, again, is finding the cube root. Whatever I do on one side of the equal sign, I do on the other side. So x cubed, right, the cube root of x cubed is just x, that cancels out. And now I need the cube root of negative 27. So I want to know what number times itself times itself again would be negative 27. So if I go back to my table and I look at my perfect cubes, here's 27, right, I see the cube root of 27 is 3. So that means 3 times 3 times 3 would be 27, but I need it to be negative 27, so we're gonna make our answer x equals negative three. Okay, now there's two questions on the bottom here. It says the first equation has two solutions and they wanna know how is that possible, right? That this has two solutions. So here's how it's possible. Perfect squares have both positive and negative roots because if I multiply a positive number by a positive number, I get a positive answer, right, a positive product. But if I multiply a negative answer by a negative answer, I'm still gonna get a positive answer. So if we go back to our first example here, right, and we just look at our solution, I'm saying that seven to the second power equals 49, which is absolutely true, right? Seven times seven does equal 49, but, wouldn't negative 7 times negative 7 also equal positive 49? Right? Heck yeah, it would. So our answer is not only x equals positive 7, but it's also negative 7. Right? So we have two solutions. x can either be positive 7 or negative 7 because both 
7 squared would give us 49, and negative 7 squared would give us 49. All right, now if we look at our other two examples, right, that is not necessarily the case because if I look at x to the third power equals 64 and I replace that with positive 4, that's definitely going to work, right? 4 times 4 times 4 absolutely gives me positive 64. However, if I were to try negative 4 and multiply negative 4 to itself three times, that is not going to give me positive 64. That's going to give me negative 64. And that is not what I want, right? I don't want it to be negative 64. I need it to be positive 64. The same thing is true here with our last example. If I do negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, that gives me negative 27, right? Two negatives would give me a positive, and then a positive times another negative would end up being negative 27. But if I were to try to do positive 3 to the third power, I'm not getting negative 27. I'm getting positive 27, and that's not what I want. I need it to be negative 27 because that's the number that's inside the radical. So also down on the bottom here, we can look, whoops, we can look here, and this is the explanation, right? Perfect cubes have positive or negative roots, right? But not both. So that's really important to remember that they don't have both, not positive and negative, just one or the other. And the reason is because a positive integer cubed would end up being positive, but a negative integer cubed is not, right? It's not positive, it's negative. So you just have to be really careful when you're solving your equations because some equations will have more than one solution. And that's basically any equation that has a variable squared. So anytime you see an equation that has x to the second power, that is going to have two solutions, right? It's going to have the positive and the negative, two solutions. But when you have equations with x cubed, there's only going to be one solution. It's either going to be the positive, like our second example, or it's going to be the negative, which was in our last example. All right, so at this point, we're going to look at the problems on the bottom. And if you feel comfortable stopping the video and trying to do these problems on your own, that would be outstanding. The ones on the right, right, that says, how about these? These are a little tricky because they have an extra step in them, but I think you can handle it. So why don't you stop the video and see how you do, and then come back on, right? Press play again, and you can watch as we review the answers. All right, let's check these answers. So we have x to the second power equals 144. So again, I'm going to start out by rewriting my problem because I like to have a little bit of room to groove here. So x squared equals 144. Now, the opposite of putting a number to the second power is finding the square root. Whatever I do on one side, I do on the other side. And that's going to leave me with x equals 12. However, right, this is a problem that has x squared in it. So not only can my answer be positive 12, but it could also be negative 12, right? It could be x equals positive 12 because 12 times 12 is 144. But it could also be negative 12 because negative 12 times negative 12 is still positive 144. Now here's the way we can show that. Instead of writing x equals 12 and then write the word or negative 12, I can do this. I can put a little plus and a minus right in front of my 12, and that shows that it's positive 12 or negative 12, right? That little plus minus means both. All right, let's move over to our next one. We have x cubed equals 125. Okay, the opposite of cubing a number is finding the cube root. So if I find the cube root on the left side of the equal sign, I also do it on the right side. x equals the cube root of 125 is positive 5. Now in this case, the negative isn't going to work because if I do negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, that will not give me positive 125. It will give me negative 125. So just one solution. These other two equations look kind of backwards, right? But that's okay. I just wanted to see, I wanted you to see that um, they might put the variable on the right sometimes, and that's okay. It doesn't change anything. So we've got 1,000 equals x cubed. So the opposite of cubing a number is finding the cube root. 
going to do the cube root on both sides of my equal sign. The cube root of 1,000 is 10, right? Because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. Now, the negative is not going to work in this case because negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10 would be negative 1,000, and we need it to be positive. Okay, next example. Again, this one's backwards, but it's okay. Right? Do not fear the x on the right side. It's fine. We're going to find the cube, I mean the square root on each side, right? Because this is x squared equals 256. So the square root of 256 is 16. Now, because this is a problem where we have x squared, we are going to have two solutions. Because 16 times 16 is positive 256, but so is negative 16 times negative 16, right? Two negatives will give us a positive. So I'm going to put that little plus minus in the front again, and that's going to show that x can be positive or negative 16. Okay, these other two problems on the side just had a little bit of an extra step in it, right? So we have to remember what we learned about solving two-step equations. Now, before I start finding the square root of anything, I need to get rid of this 8. Since this is a plus 8, I'm going to start out by subtracting 8 on each side. And when I do that, I'm going to be left with x squared equals 64. From here, I'm going to find the square root on each side of my equal sign. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 64 is 8. Now, this is a problem where we have x squared, right? That's going to be two solutions. 8 times 8 is 64, but so is negative 8 times negative 8. So you want to make sure you put that little plus minus in front of your 8. Okay, last example. We're going to start out by canceling that 15. We need to add it on each side. That's going to leave me with x cubed equals 1,331. From here, I need to find the cube root on both sides. And that's going to leave me with x equals 11. 11 times 11 times 11 is 1,331. Now it can't be negative, right? Because negative 11 times negative 11 times negative 11 would be negative 1,331. So this has only one solution. Okay, so hopefully you guys are feeling good about solving equations using perfect squares and perfect cubes. One thing I just want to leave you with is that you remember an equation that has a variable squared is going to have two solutions. An equation that has a variable cubed is only going to have one solution. So please keep that in mind. If you need to go back and watch the examples again, feel free to do so. And if you still need some help, remember, reach out to your teachers. We are always here to help you, and I will see you next time.